I'll say thank you, Nigel. I said thank you to Nigel when I actually uh, did the recording with him. So, uh, yeah, we do um, have the, the right policy updates at uh, many of the meetings. So, it's, uh, I think it's a nice little extra uh, feature to have there. It's a shame we couldn't be here on this occasion, but that's that's fine. So, our next talk, we've got our silver sponsors, Linky 11. We've got Ken McIntyre. So, uh, I'll hand over to you, Ken. Uh, hi everyone, good afternoon. Um, yesterday uh, the, there was a tweet from the Director General of Communications and uh, Spokesperson for the European Union. And that tweet basically said our parliamentary website has gone down for two hours and it had a DDoS attack. Um, the organisation that claimed responsibility for that was Killnet. Killnet is a Russian ha hacking organisation and about a month ago they took down 14 airports. They attacked the passenger boarding systems and, de and they used DDoS attacks there. Um, these are common, very, very common. In fact, uh, Bitcom did a report recently that showed that DDoS attacks were actually on the increase. It's the fastest growing, again, the fastest growing uh, cyber attack in the industry that we're actually facing. Um, my, my responsibility in um, uh, Link, Link 11 is uh, to mo promote our services. Today, what we're going to talk about is how our services actually work. We're a DDoS mitigation organisation, a DDoS protection organisation. Um, I'll talk about how the technology works, but some of you may not know who we are. We've been a member of Lynx for 10 years. Um, and basically, we started life in 2005 as a hosting organisation. We basically uh, were focused in the gaming section. And we started in Frankfurt, where our headquarters are. And during the early days of our business, we ourselves were actually attacked by uh, pretty damaging and destructive um, cyber attacks, including a lot of DDoS attacks. At that time, there was nothing really resilient or robust enough that could actually do the job and stop it. And our business was going down for days and hours at a time. So basically, the chap you see on uh, your left-hand side, Carson, he's one of the co-founders of the company, also the CTO. He and his team uh, decided to address the issues directly. And so basically what he and his team developed was a machine learning algorithm. Uh, our marketing team called it artificial intelligence, but it was a proactive machine learning algorithm, or series of algorithms, that basically um, looks at a customer's profile or our customer's profiles and um, detects any non unknown DDoS attacks. Uh, so basically what then happened, we basically patented the technology and we did a seismic shift in our core business and we're now very much focused on uh, cybersecurity and specifically DDoS, uh, DDoS protection. Um, we um, also think one thing that's kind of significant, um, if you get involved or you, you, you take part in any uh, DDoS resolution, you're looking at infrastructure there and you're also looking at application there. One thing to be aware of is, and we're seeing it very, very much across the, the globe now, is data, when you're looking at analysing and breaking down um, packets, application packets, that you keep the data in sovereign, okay? So GDPR, for example, compliance, and I've just heard it mentioned that's what triggered this uh, from the last presentation, GDPR compliance in Europe is really, really important. So you want the um, scrubbing, and I'll talk about the, the architectures, the scrubbing to be done in, in sovereign, and it's becoming more and more common to see that the data doesn't leave the country. Um, going into how it actually operates, so we, we, our, fo our, our service proposition is very focused. I'm not going to talk about each of these propositions. Um, at the very core of what we do is infrastructure and DDoS protection. Um, with infrastructure, we're talking about uh, layer three and four, and with web DDoS protection, we're talking about layers four, five, uh, sorry, uh, five, six, and seven. Um, adjunct products or services, as you can see, there is uh, secure DNS, CDN, bot management, and and WAF, but I'm really going to talk about how our service actually works today because I've only got 10 minutes. Um, so basically what we have across the globe is 44 scrubbing centres across the globe. Um, being a Lynx member and members of other uh, you know, exchanges across the globe is really, really vital because they provide interconnection points. Because one of the key things you've got to consider is latency and where you connect your, your customers or your services in. So we have um, 44 scrubbing centres across the globe and um, basically uh, two 
SOCs to uh, security operating centres. Now, we work in partnership with a number of organisations. If any organisation is looking for a partner, you could use our uh, security operating centre as a sort of the front end of your own business, or we can be, uh, you know, like a behind your own SOC operation, if anyone's interested in that type of uh, interworking. Um, we can to hear about, you know, from you and talk to you about that. But at each of these uh, scrubbing centres, we've got three clusters or groups of servers. There's the, a group of servers that deal with the adjunct services you saw there, you know, the bot management, the WAF, etc. And there's two clusters of servers that actually uh, deal with the DDoS mitigation. The first, and there's a, there's a diagram I'll show you and I'll put them in context, but basically the two clusters there are looking at things like um, our, our knowledge or our look, uh, you know, for known attacks, we have a knowledge base or a, a rule based uh, cluster of servers. And the other cluster of servers, the final check we do is what um, we call our machine cluster, machine learning cluster. And basically what that's actually doing is looking at each and every single customer and taking effectively a, a baseline or a fingerprint of what their traffic pro profile should look like. Um, so for example, if I look at, you know, the traffic profile, for instance, we're not just looking at the volume of attack, you know, sorry, volume of traffic, um, because, for example, over the next few days, starting tomorrow, many, many organisations are going to have massive peaks because it's Black Friday tomorrow, and obviously what we're looking at is whether any of those peaks are actually risks and attacks, as opposed to genuine traffic. And the way we um, keep a check on that is obviously we're looking at multiple vectors. We're looking at things like the TCP rate of a client. Uh, we're looking at the typical origins, IP addresses of clients, the average packet size of clients. We're looking at things like the, um, you know, the internet uh, communication management protocol rates and things like that. So we build up a, a fingerprint, and these are held in our, um, our, 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 our server farm, the, the area in, the, in each of our uh, scrubbing centres, um, which is the very, very final stage of the checks that we actually do. So when you look at how we... Um, sorry, have you... I'm not seeing the same slides as you are. I do apologise. Is that yeah? They are. So I do apologise. Um, so basically, when you look, when the data comes into our um, scrubbing centres, our scrubbing centres also, just for information, can either be always on or on demand. And and some clients prefer different scenarios and different working scenarios. Um, the first thing that actually happens is the data comes in. It goes into the the first batch of servers. What they're basically doing for each and every client and each and uh, every uh, set of data and packets. It's in a plausibility check. So it's in a really, really basic check. It's checking, for example, um, the headers on layer three and layer four and making sure it complies with RFC standards. And if it's, it doesn't, it's just dismissed. And that's a very quick check on pretty low level um, attacks. The next stage, uh, the next batch of servers that it goes through is, is looking up our references of known attacks. Um, and, you know, for example, policies and rules will be set for known attacks. Um, we also update that register from our, um, our machine learning farm as well when we find out about new attacks. The next um, stage, stage three, as it shows there, basically what that's doing is deep diving into the packets and it's um, doing a closer analysis of the structure of the packets. That's where in in encryption keys may be used to look at layer seven. And, um, and we, we then look at things, for example, like is a DNS uh, request higher than 500 bytes, and that's non-standard, and that'd be dismissed out and blocked out. Um, so that's pretty standard for the industry. Those, those three tiers that you see there are pretty, pretty standard for the industry. Um, but when attacks are unknown, some organisations will actually black hole the traffic. Unfortunately, they're actually black holing good traffic as well. And um, also, it, the it, in an unknown attack, it could be taken to a group of um, security analysts to look at that and create a new rule. So that's, that's sort of like the industry standard. It'd be quite interesting, I don't know if many people know about the new Telecommunications Security Act that came in last year, and Ofcom are actually applying fines this October, they started applying fines. But they're talking about how effective anyone that's providing broadband and network services in the UK, how effective is the security? I, I don't know whether it's, it, it goes into the sort of granular detail of how they, how they view black holing, but it's becoming a bit of a taboo, you know, taboo sort of subject because the aim is to get real traffic, customer traffic through to the endpoint as quickly as possible. The final area where we sort of differentiate, and this was the this, uh, this study of a paper written by, or uh, a benchmark study carried out by Frost and Sullivan between ourselves and four of our competitors. You, if you want to have a look at that study, it's on our website. But basically, the machine learning environment is where things are really different for us. So basically, we're, what we're doing there, when we take the client's um, fingerprint or their, their baseline, we 
we then look at that in a, 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 literally in a you know, packet by packet basis. And for instance, a um, couple of scenarios where you get situations like carpet bombing. Um, carpet bombing are quite subtle low level attacks. You can actually attack a single IP address or a whole class C um, set of IP addresses. Um, the frequency changes, the frequency of the attack changes, um, and also the scale of the attack. So for example, uh, what we discovered last year, looking back over 2021, this, this, when you get a volumetric attack, a, a, you know, a, a volume attack, on average, they've increased by fourfold at least fourfold. Um, and the other thing we've discovered is at least seven out of 10 attacks are multi-vector. So they're attacking the protocol, the application, and they're flexing it. So we had um, an ISP organization in Malaysia, for example, who had a carpet bombing attack over 36 hours. And what they'd actually do was vary the attack at different, you know, different vectors. And it was really subtle. Um, and by our machine learning actually tracking the profile actual traffic, and look, we were able to identify patterns that were you know, minutes long as opposed to on, in the moment. So um, they're getting really, really, as I say, complicated. And it's really hard to detect those sort of carpet bombing attacks unless you're really monitoring it and looking for anomalies at real time. So um, that, that's essentially what makes it different. Um, you know, we were really proud from the, the benchmark study. We came out on average six times faster uh, than our competitors and less um, uh, false positives, which is, again, is very important. Um, the, the thing that's actually significant in that is given that attacks are much, much larger now and more complex, what you really want to do is stop them before they ramp up because they get to a point where it actually becomes uh, incredibly difficult to bring your, um, you know, your business back online quickly. And if you think, for example, the European Union yesterday said we were down for two hours. If you think of some of the large logos tomorrow who have put a lot of effort and money into investing in the, the, the advertising campaigns and so on. Um, if they're down for two hours tomorrow, that is quite significant. I mean, in the retail space, typically, I'm sure there's probably possibly people here dealing with retail. Um, the majority of the revenues from retail come in between Black Friday, some say uh, Valentine's Day and some say Mother's Day, but it's the peak, 60, 70% of their business. So two hours out over the next couple of days is quite significant. Um, DDoS attacks are, on the, are on the, uh, definitely on the increase. The biggest change we've seen over the last 18 months has been COVID and obviously, sadly, the uh, conflict in the Ukraine. We've seen uh, this year alone, we've seen states, complete countries, have had to block traffic coming in, ingress. I won't say which country that was, um, a state in the Middle East, but basically they had to block any ingress traffic in because they were being attacked and all of their um, carrier circuits into actually that country was actually completely shut down because they had size of very sizable uh, volumetric attacks and they could only uh, work online in country. So there is, um, we're seeing, for example, during COVID, um, there was a, an education authority in New York, in the state of New York, um, and it transpired when the kids were sent home because of the pandemic, a group of kids between the age of roughly eight to 14 had brought down the virtual learning environment for all the schools across the state. And that was by a DDoS attack. So it's um, so pervasive. Uh, I don't think we talk enough about it sometimes. Um, it's sometimes it's just a simple check in the box. But also the thing about DDoS attacks, it is used for things like ransomware and obviously for ID theft as well. Um, if there's any more questions, I can't deep dive any more than hopefully you can sense there. But hope you can see why uh, it's important to be kind of different. Um, that's a terrible um, stock photograph. But if you want to talk to me, I'm outside and I'll, I'll see you later. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay.